All right, how about this one? You're not going to believe this. Imagine a nuclear plant the size of a small garden shed capable of powering 20,000 homes. This could be a reality within the next five years. Scientists are claiming the mini power plants will be absolutely safe, require no moving parts. They'd actually be buried in concrete underground. Come on. Mm -hmm. Joining me now to explain this, the author of Physics of the Impossible and theoretical physics professor Michio Kaku. Thank you so much, Professor, for being with us. Glad to be on the show, Greg. All right. Uh, tell me about this thing. It's, it sounds, uh, you know, you think of nuclear power plants as these enormous structures that consume acres and acres. This thing's tiny. This is not as harebrained as you might think it is. First of all, it's based on a 50-year-old technology created by my mentor, Edward Teller, father of the hydrogen bomb. But you're not going to be able to barbecue your steak with a nuke in your backyard anytime soon. Chernobyl is not possible with this kind of reactor. It's underground, so you're not going to have this explosion like in Chernobyl. And it's hermetically sealed, so it's idiot-proof. So even Butterfingers cannot screw up this nuclear power plant. But it can only energize, as you mentioned, about 20,000 homes. So yeah. for a modern city, it would take several hundred of these nuclear power plants to energize Chicago or Los right. Angeles. And, and that's not going to happen, I don't think. Really? Well, now, I see it's affordable. I think, because I was doing a little quick math, it's $25 million for each unit, right? Oh, that's so right. If, if so, you know, goes into 20,000 households, what does that come out to, about 75 bucks per home? I mean, it's eminently affordable. That's right. In fact, it's actually competitive at 10 cents per watt. However, I think it will satisfy a niche market. If you take a look at mining colonies in, in Alaska or in the tundra or in the desert, something like this, which is portable, small, compact, and safe, could be a real hit in the hinterland. However, the nightmare of licensing several hundred of these plants in Los Angeles or Chicago uh, the environmental impact statements, uh, the, yeah. the outrage of consumers would be too great, I think. So um, you're not going to have Chernobyl, but you're not going to be able to barbecue your steak with a nuke anytime soon. Uh, that's kind of too bad. Well, the U.S. government is underway licensing the technology, and I guess the orders are already uh, stacking up there. And um, the one good thing about it is, you know, for the terrorists out there, this isn't weapons-grade material. It's not going to help them out, right? Uh, that's right. But every five to ten years, you have to remove of the nuclear waste. Not much. It's oh. about this big, but it's high-level nuclear waste. It will glow in the dark, and a hijacker or terrorist could use this nuclear waste as a dirty bomb mm. to spread it out in, let's say, the financial district of a town to right. paralyze and terrorize a city. All right. So well, this is a proven design. We'll have to leave it at that. Author of Physics of the Impossible, Michio Kaku, great to see you. Thank you so much. My pleasure, Greg.